None of us choose where we're born. I've been thinking a lot about place recently and how the luck of the draw that determines where you're born and grow up can have such a profound influence on your sound. But I can't help but wonder sometimes where I'd be if I'd been born in America and grown up in New York or New Orleans or Nashville. Would I still be making the music I am? And there's one city 5,405 miles away from the small cathedral city I grew up in, in the UK, that has had such a profound effect on the music industry and the sounds we've listened to over the past five decades that it is impossible to ignore. Love it or hate it, and plenty of people hate it, LA has been the nexus point of some of the most influential music of the 20th and 21st century. I thought that it's about time I took a proper look at Los Angeles. <laughs> She's moving to LA. Was there nothing that you could do to make her stay? If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. It really, really helps me out. We lost a legend recently, David Crosby an LA native whose work with the Birds and Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young made him one of the most popular and respected musicians of his era, was, along with Mama Cass Elliot, one of the key originators of the Laurel Canyon scene. Joni Mitchell made her home in the canyon from Canada after a brief stint in New York and was soon joined by her fellow compatriot, Neil Young, who drove his battered old hearse the 2,000 miles from Winnipeg to LA. Others made their way too, and in a short space of time, Carol King, Nico, Frank Zappa, the Mums and Puppers, Jackson Brown, and members of the Eagles, the Monkeys, and the Doors all lived close by one another. Aside from the Doors, who mostly came from nearby Venice, no one was a Laurel Canyon native. They moved to there and created something magical together. So much creativity happened because of the artists' close proximity to one another. They could turn up at each other's houses with guitars and refreshments, hang out, write songs, play records, and inspire one another. They fused elements of traditional folk, British rock and roll, and American pop, and turned it into the defining sound of the decade. In the 70s and 80s, they'd made LA the world-leading powerhouse of popular music, wrestling control away from New York and London. Young, hip label executives like David Geffen or Irving Azoff quit their junior positions with New York's old guard and set up their own labels and management companies, creating the modern music industry and becoming fabulously wealthy to boot. And at the centre of it was David Crosby, always up for jamming, for matchmaking, introducing friends to other friends, and suggesting records. The Laurel Canyon period is well documented, and if you've not already seen it, you'll definitely enjoy my video, The World's Most Famous Groupie, where I'm shown the sights of the canyon and Hollywood with the Sunset Strip legend Pamela Debar. But not everyone found their place in the city. For some, it's too big, too fake, too much traffic. David Bowie moved to LA from New York in 1975, preparing to shoot the film The Man Who Fell to Earth, but the city didn't agree with him. Already nursing a rather sizable habit, the singer found temptation everywhere and descended into a psychosis, obsessed with the occult, demons and the Third Reich. Despite this, he managed to record one of his finest albums in LA, Station to Station, although he said he remembered almost nothing of its making. Bowie decided enough was enough. He left LA and took a down on his luck Iggy Pop with him to Europe, first Switzerland, then Poland, and finally Berlin. Well, both Iggy and I felt that it might be time to clean up, so we, we were very smart about it. We went straight out of LA to the heroin capital of Europe, Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> that was the smartest move we made. The city's war-torn architecture and Weimar glamour providing the inspiration Bowie so desperately needed. If he'd stayed put in LA, history might have turned out very differently. But what's it like today? Expensive, sure. Full of traffic, yes. Am I really missing out by not being there? Or if I'm serious about making it as a musician, should I make the move? LA's got some of the finest recording studios in the world and labels, management companies, engineers, producers and agents all still call it home. There's a lot of venues, big and small, lots of opportunities to collaborate, build a fan base, and even pick up session work. 
I recently caught up with my friend, Nicholas Wienerglue. Nicholas is a professional touring and session guitarist, musical director and producer based in LA. He's toured all over the world, working with pop stars like Sam Smith, Jordan Fisher, and my current favorite, Fletcher, who he's been touring with in Europe. Nicholas is a textbook example of how being physically in the area can lead to great opportunities. Do you still think people need to move to LA to go off on tour or do you think there are other cities like Nashville or yeah think- absolutely absolutely there's still other places to be and, uh, and other things to do like New York there's still a good amount of work in New York and um, Nashville obviously is a, is a great hot spot too um, Atlanta is becoming a really good spot um, I think if you're specifically trying to tour I think Los Angeles is like one of the best positions you can put yourself in just because there's so many artists everywhere and there's always new artists popping up it's the only place i've ever been that i could genuinely feel that there's like enough work to go around there's almost so much work and so many artists and so many projects always happening there's like almost a shortage of musicians in a, like i've seen lately really? people have been people will text me like hey we need uh, we need like a full band ready to go on tour next week for a month and a half and sometimes they're like people are scrambling to find musicians and the nice thing about LA is um which I always stress to people is like you don't have to come right now there's no you're not missing out on anything like there's always things happening not to say that like you're gonna come here and instantly have work and succeed you know like after I had moved here I got really lucky and, and got this tour um that lasted like a year and then got off of that tour and had no work and I drove Lyft and Uber for, you know, a couple months in the meantime and like did Postmates. Like I still was hustling because, you know, people are like, wow, he went on a world tour and traveled and played all these big venues and was on TV, must must have it all figured out. And then it's like, got home, I'm driving Lyft, baby. You know, I got to make some money still. Um, so there's definitely like an ebb and flow. Um, and still now, you know, like I'll have a really good month and then you have a trash month and then you have a good month, you know, it's, it's all, all about balance. But, um, the fact is being here, opportunities will present themselves, um, over the course of time again and again and again and again. So it seems there's still a place for that type of old school networking, showing up, taking risks and praying it all works out. And there's also the reality that it's not all glamorous. You might come off a world tour and end up driving a taxi or waiting tables. And there's no shame whatsoever in that. We're all trying to hustle in our own way. But fate can also throw you new and exciting opportunities via the online space. These days, you're more likely to get your big break through something you post online than you are from some A&R catching your open mic set. I definitely owe my career to the efforts I put in online when the traditional music industry had no place for me. Rabea Massad, another great YouTuber whose channel you may have seen, got scouted by UK superstar rapper Stormzy to open his Reading Festival set because of an eye-catching post he'd put of himself shredding on Instagram. So audiences and fan bases can be built from a single video if you're lucky, or in my case, 500 videos and counting. It's easy to fall in love with the glamorous history of LA's golden age, but nothing stays as it was. Cities change, scenes change, and people change. Places have their moments. Think classical Athens or Elizabethan London when Shakespeare wrote his plays. Greenwich Village in New York was the musical epicenter of the American folk music revival in the 1950s and 60s. Seattle was the center of the world for guitar music for a short while in the 90s until the scene evaporated pretty much overnight. Trends come and go. But cultural hotspots like New York and London risk pricing out younger artists who are just starting out. Gentrification's a well-known problem in just about every major city in the world. The things that made it desirable in the first place are bulldozed and replaced with empty luxury flats. The days of cheap rent, like a place in Laurel Canyon, feel long gone. As for older artists, if they're successful, they leave the scene they created for endless world tours. If they're not, then they decide that maybe they want to stop paying extortionate rents and settle down, if not in the suburbs, then maybe away 
from the noise and mayhem of the cooler areas. And it feels like in the internet age, scenes are over before they've even begun, withering under the spotlight of the world's attention before they've had time to develop and mature into something great. Maybe LA's power is that it can be so many things to so many people, which is why it produced more great albums than most cities put together. Magic still happens every day in major cities like LA or New York or London or Berlin. So if you've always wanted to go and follow your dream, then why not take a chance? Nothing lasts forever, so why not live the time you have? I just want to thank you for watching this video. It means the world that you took the time and you may notice a lot of effort goes into videos like this. I'm always trying to improve and find interesting topics to research, write and film. So I would like to make you aware that you can become an integral part of my journey by becoming a Patreon supporter. I currently have a number of tiers starting from $5 a month and I'll let you peruse the site at your own leisure. So please check out the link in the description. I'd love to see you over there. But of course, as always, I'll see you here again very, very soon.